We're live. Chester, come here. We're live. First time in two weeks. Let's see who comes to hang out. Who's that? Who's that? Oh, yes, he's such a big turkey. He's so cute. Oh. Oh, deep purrs. Yes. <laughs> go, go, go. Show him the booty. Look at that chunky butt. Oh, you just did the pop. Where's your brother? There's your brother. Let's flip the camera around. There's Ernie. I love the way he sits. He, he tucks both of his arms underneath his chest. And you. Hi, Maureen. Maureen Shea sent me a nice big bag of cat food the other day from the Amazon wish list, which I do need to fix. I will fix tonight. Sorry, I just have so much going on in life. Oh, look at you with your plop. Look at your floof. You are just legendary, Harry Bear. Look at that. It's like the clouds. The clouds in heaven on Chester's belly. And there's Ernie. Ernie's still being skittish, but... He's let, he lets me approach him. I try, I tried to play with him with some toys earlier, and he just gets scared of the toy and runs. But he's, I like his demeanor. He's like, someone commented yesterday, Chester's the extrovert, Ernie's the introvert. It's a nice contrast of personalities. So that's cool. And I think Chester's slowly getting Ernie more comfortable, or maybe he's lightly bullying him. Does Chester get hairballs? Yeah, he was hacking one up yesterday. But I think that's because I haven't been here to brush him. My dad's obviously been taking care of the boys, but they don't get the full spectrum treatment like I give them. So now that he's getting brushed again by his loyal peasant, hopefully that'll prevent hairballs. I was honestly scared. He was coughing and hacking, and I hadn't seen him do it before, and I had to look up on YouTube to make sure everything was all right. Oh, you're so good. You're rubbing against daddy's leg. But yeah, we're back. I went to Mexico for roughly 10 days or so. And went to Vegas for four days after that to shoot two different races, one of which was a rally, a traditional stage rally, which was my first time shooting a stage rally. It was pretty incredible. I've been shooting motorsport for I don't know, 10 years now, maybe more. I've shot drifting, I've shot rallycross, I've shot motocross, I've shot Formula One, I've shot MotoGP, but I'd never shot a rally. And if you know what rally is, you know it's the pinnacle of four-wheel motorsports aside from Formula One. So basically we were outside Guanajuato slash Leon, Mexico, and we were just driving through the mountains and going to scout out stages to capture my good friend Connor Martell racing his butt off with co-driver Alex Gelsimino, who used to co-drive for Ken Block. Sorry, this is a lot of motorsports talk, which might not mean anything to a lot of you, but I just figured I'd give a little background. But anyway, let's scroll up through here. Barbara asked, what are safe places to visit in Mexico? You know, I can honestly say I don't, I'm not the person to ask that question. I had a great deal of anxiety going into this trip because I've invested more than $40,000 into my camera gear over the years and I was expecting to potentially get robbed, <laughs> which, yeah, that was scaring me. Um, but everything worked out. I mean, the people there were super friendly. I think the locals embraced the rally. Like, motorsports is so much bigger outside of the United States. The people in Mexico were just fanatics. It was so cool to see the reaction they had. Whereas in the United States, everyone loves football and baseball and team sports, but the rest of the world is huge into motorsports. So it was cool to be in an environment that had a deep appreciation for what we were doing. Um, but everything was safe. Um, I did hear some pretty gnarly stories. Uh, I did get to go horseback riding. We had two down days before Vegas. So we had a little time to rest and relax. And uh, our bus driver up to the horse ride tour, I was just picking his brain with questions. And I asked about the cartel and he said that the Federales, which is the local police force, or actually not local, that's the state police force, had apprehended a 14 year old boy that had killed and scalped 62 people. And he was a cartel member. And 
if that doesn't give you perspective on how good life is in the United States, granted everyone's living a different different path, different story, but a 14 year old that's killed 62 people, that's like so alarming and sad, honestly, um, and scary. It's like, you don't know, you could be talking to kids there and they could hold you up at gunpoint, but everything worked out well. We didn't have any sketchy issues and everything was smooth. And honestly, I hadn't been to Mexico since I was eight years old. And when I went when I was eight, it was to Cancun, which is a super touristy area. And in this, in this trip, we were in the center of Mexico, which was actually at about 5,000 feet of elevation, which was cool too. We got extra sun and uh, it was just a different climate and environment than I had expected to be in. So I had a great time and I definitely garnered a deeper appreciation for Mexican culture, the music, the people. Um, I'm feeling pretty motivated to try and get back on Duolingo and just try and learn Spanish so that if we do go back next year, I'm not a full-blown gringo who doesn't understand a lick of Spanish. So that was cool. And then we went to Vegas and uh, finished out the nitro cross season, which was awesome. There was like 70 mile per hour winds, which made it very difficult to shoot. I was getting covered in dust. I had sand in my eyes and my ears and my hair. I also got my hair cut in Mexico. I got a mullet and I'm loving it. I'm streamlined. I got the waterfall on the back because it's almost rafting season, but I don't have hair in my eyes. So I might look like a freak, but it feels good. So that was nice. Connor and I got our hair cut by a barber who didn't speak a lick of English. I just showed him a picture and he did it and they charged us 12 US dollars, 150 pesos. I ended up paying the guy about five times as much as what he charged because I was so happy with my cut. So that was cool. That's kind of a rough summation of the trip to Mexico. Um, it was tough being away from the kitties, but I knew they're in good hands. I certainly miss them a lot, but uh, sacrifices have to be made to build the dream on the land money doesn't grow on trees so um i'm gonna have to continue to travel for work as i always have and unfortunately that'll keep me away from the boys at times but ultimately it'll lead to a house on the land a septic a well and a cat paradise so that's pretty cool um i'm just gonna scroll up before i lose some of these questions into the ether Barbara asked if I'd been to the Bellagio. I'd been to the Bellagio. We were actually staying right next to it. Um, Wake Up asked, have you tried sitting down and playing with Ernie? He's not much for play right now, but he has been letting me love up on him. I gave him a ton of pets today and scritches and scratches. Chester doesn't have as much patience for that. I can pet his head and his lower back, but once I try and scratch Chester's belly, he, he'll give me play bites and, and claw at me, whereas Ernie, he'll just... He rolls over and lets me just start going to town. So it's nice to have a contrast between the two. I feel like he's going to take a lot more time, but he's ultimately going to be a super love bug. So that's pretty cool. Let's see if I missed any others. Cow Tom said, I love the donkey that you played with. He's so handsome. Yeah, he was so handsome. It was actually sad, too. The, there was two horses next to the donkey, and their front legs were tied. And I was so close to taking my knife out and cutting them loose. And then I realized I might be messing with somebody's livelihood. So I didn't want the farmer's horses to run off into a canyon and him have to spend multiple days retrieving his horses. But it, it, it pained me to see horses with their front legs tied. They could like, they had to shuffle forward to move. It was sad, but the donkey was free range. Romunto, as I called him. And uh, yeah, just like any animals, I just love animals. It was cool to be able to pet a donkey and give him some ear scratches. And I always feel bad for donkeys and cows and horses because they can't scratch themselves and they're always swarmed by flies and stuff of that nature, so. It's always nice to give them a little scratch and give them some loving. But the cats are good. I posted a video last night of them. It was so funny. I looked over last night and Chester literally just goes up to Ernie, grabs him around the neck like this, slams him onto the couch and then starts licking him. And then two minutes after that, they started wrestling. And then about five minutes after that, they were both taking naps together. So I think Chester's been establishing his alpha position here at the home 
but he's also been pretty hospitable and nice to his little big brother. So that was cool. No, you didn't miss Chester's background. Um, Susan said, I probably missed Chester's background. I haven't, haven't uh, tuned into that yet, but I will hear shortly. Um, I just realized I have a screenshot on my phone from my neighbor who told me his whole backstory. So I'm, I don't know how I'm gonna read that and close the live, but I will figure out a way. But long story short, this is Chester's story. So my neighbors who have cats who are super friendly, probably the people I'm closest with on the road, they're younger than me and they have three kids and a bunch of cats and a dog. They told me that my neighbor at the top of the road bought Chester when he was a little kitty and their dog attacked him and Chester couldn't coexist with their dog. And so he escaped from their house and then he went to my neighbors who gave me this info and they started to care for him. But they had two male cats and Chester was trying to establish dominance over their cats. And so they would feed him, but when they tried to let him in their house, he would spray everywhere and he would attack the male cats. <laughs> Because he's a beast. Everyone knows he's a little beast. He's a little fighter. The big fighter, aren't you? Yeah, you said you're a good boy. So he came from my neighbors, I guess. He, he wasn't, I don't think he was a product of being born by random cats on the land. He just, he didn't fit in where he was. And luckily the timing lined up where I bought that land and I rescued him. So I don't think he was surviving outside for much more than a year at most. But um, I'm just so happy that I was able to rescue him because he's it was destiny. Frank asked if there's any confirmations of Chester's age. I mean, I didn't really get any more intel on that, but I would say the vet was pretty accurate. He's probably two to three years old. Um, so hopefully we'll have a long life together. Let's see. Jack asked, where's your friend Big Nick? Big Nick lives in Washington, D.C., but he is... He's actually a firefighter and a paramedic, and he deals with some pretty crazy shit down there. Washington, D.C. is a dangerous city, and he's definitely had to scrape people off the ground that have been lit up with 45 rounds and all that and more. So I'm looking forward to him being able to move back to Vermont to a place of peace and less violence and just get back to his roots. Look at these two. Look at these two little honey buns. You're so cute. So I don't think I've gone live since I had my perk test done, but uh, shot an episode about two weeks ago. Um, Mark, who obviously most of you guys know from my episodes, the excavator guy who's been a great help to me, put me in contact with a gentleman named Lonnie who's semi-retired but still does septic design. And Lonnie sent over his guy, Dave, I think his name was. I can't exactly remember. And... I was surprised. He said we could do the perk testing in the winter. I was under the impression we couldn't. He said, all you need to do is get through the top layer of, uh, what am I looking for? Frost, frost layer on the ground. So I went up to the land. It was crazy windy day, super stormy. Dug about four holes, which is super easy to do. I got through the snow right through the top layer and dug about two to three feet down. And then he brought an auger and started drilling to get an idea of the soil content, which is unfortunately mostly clay. And then I left for my trip and then Lonnie reached out to me and said they had to go back and do a couple more test pits because they couldn't find a suitable area from the ones I dug. So that was a little concerning, but he did follow up and say they did find a spot. So now the next process is I have to send him a check for 2000 bucks and that will cover the design. And then once the design's in place and the state of Vermont has approved it, I'll be one step closer to getting a well drilled. And then I'll be able to actually figure out my building plans. Um, realistically, the timeline will probably be, hopefully I can get a well drilled this year if I have the funds. Don't know if I'll get the mound system in place because that's gonna be pretty expensive, but if I can, I will. And then in 2025, I will either pour a slab or a concrete basement. I'm still deciding what I wanna do. I think I wanna do a basement. It's just gonna be a money thing because I know I'll want the storage room and uh, eventually frame something up. So that's super exciting. I know I was dealing with a great deal of anxiety about a month and a half ago, just not knowing and having a certain degree of uncertainty about 
the future of the land and if it would be develop developable. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but it seems like it will be. So I'm super thankful for that. And I'm super thankful to uh, have local connections that can steer me in the right direction and hopefully prevent me from getting hosed financially by the bigger companies. So Frank asked, do you feel better about the septic situation? I do. I'm not stoked that I'm going to have to do a mound system because it's going to be very expensive, but I'm just thankful I'll be able to do one in general. Kel Max said, congrats on 4.6 million views, which is in reference to the Dodo piece. That was pretty cool. I mean, I definitely went through their YouTube channel and just looked through all the recent videos they had posted in the last month and my video far outperformed all the other ones I saw. So I guess you guys aren't the only ones who appreciate my story. Um, seems like everyone's got a little soft spot in their heart for this little meatball. And that was cool. Um, what else? Uh, after being gone for two weeks, I think I'm going to invest in a litter robot. I was sticking to the traditional way of scooping the shit, but I feel like it's kind of ir not irresponsible, but it's a lot for me to ask to have my dad have to do that on a regular basis. I'm, I'm curious if any of you guys have litter robots because it seems like they're pretty effective. It is an investment. It's going to be close to a thousand dollars, but if that'll make it so it's easier for me to leave and make money for my job and not have as much stress knowing that I have to depend on my father to do all the dirty work. I think it's a worthy investment. So we'll have to figure that out. Kathy said the litter robot might scare them. I'm sure it'll scare them a little bit, but Chester's not afraid of much. So, and I've also talked to some people and they said it saved them a great deal of money just in litter just the way the machine works. So in the long run, it could save me money. <laughs> Covia Union Defector said, I've got a litter robot. He's called my spouse. That's funny. I don't have one of those, so. Della said, I wish I had one, but they're too pricey. They're definitely pricey. So we'll see. I had a Chinese company reach out about a month or two ago. I think I mentioned it in the live trying to offer to send me an off-brand version, but I read the reviews on it and everyone said they crap out. And it was just a company that was basically trying to get me to peddle their product on my social media platform to people like you who have cats. And to be quite honest, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna try and pedal products that I don't personally use. Obviously it's pretty clear that I like Dual tools because they work great and I have no no problem talking about that because they've made my life easier and they've made my life more fun. Um, between the Sawzall, all my jigsaw, my pole saw, um, this thing, I got the DeWalt handheld leaf blower. This thing's been awesome. I use, I've been using this to clear snow off my truck in the winter. I've seen my neighbors out there scraping off their cars and I just go out in under two minutes, boom, cars cleared off. So. As the old saying goes, work smarter, not harder. So probably gonna get a litter robot. That's that's new in my cat world. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I had a list of stuff to talk about. Oh, I also got a backstory on Ernie. He was another neighbor's cat, a different neighbor. And they had bought him and they kept him caged up for like two to three days and then let him loose. Apparently they barely left cat food out for him. So my super cool cat neighbors who told me Chester's backstory started to take care of him and at least feed him. And then I think he kind of just migrated to my land because he was living underneath my trailer. Like every time I would show up, he'd be sitting on the front stoop. And obviously once I created those cat shelters and started putting feeders out, he was the main cat that was using him. He would be asleep during the day in those shelters. And now he gets to sleep inside. So I think we've had a full circle success with both the kitties and they're happy. I mean, look at Chester, he's so happy. Such a chonky boy. Hey, yeah, yo said what I do recommend when I get a mobile camera. I have two, I have two blink cameras, so. That's cool. Those do the job. Uh, Valentina said, how is the roof now? Did you eliminate the leaks? Um, 
I eliminated the majority of the leaks with the roof tar that I implemented two episodes ago. However, that one spot with the soggy insulation that everyone says I need to rip out, which I will do, uh, still has a little bit of a leak. So I think I will put some of that sheet metal on top of the roof and try and secure it somehow. Uh, we had a windstorm of like 55 mile per hour winds last week, which amazingly did not mulch or wreck anything on my land so just another project to add to the list but that'll that'll get tackled here soon spring is definitely in the air here in vermont the snow has melted unfortunately i didn't get to ski as much as i want and utilize my season's pass as much as i want but ultimately i live for the warmer weather and the sun and i can actually get work done on the land when it's nice out so Coviet union defector did you ever confirm if ernie's deaf i ernie is not deaf but he definitely is hard of hearing, I think, because of his one ear being beat up. He just, he's, he doesn't have as strong sense of hearing as Chester does or a normal cat. But he does hear. I know that for a fact. I've clapped by him, and he gets startled by noise. So he's definitely hearing things. When you say you want dinner, don't you, you little pork chop? And look at Ernie. He's just licking his stuff. Yeah, the Ernie boy. He's so cute. I love Ernie. He's so cute and gray and small. and He's just digging in there. Let's see if I can pet him. He's probably going to be on high alarm. Hi, sweetie. Can I pet you? Yeah, he's a good boy. Huh? Yeah, this is a first for the live. Oh, he loves daddy's attention. You're such a good boy. Look at those sweet little eyes. He has the most innocent little eyes. He definitely has PTSD. I feel like he's been through the ringer compared to Chester. He's a little survivor boy. Yeah. Chester's being very vocal. That means he wants food or he has to take a dump, but I feel like it's the former. Yeah, you're so cute. Oh, you're so cute. Yeah. Oh. You're so cute. Yeah, you love the scratchies. It's sad because this ear is like just straight cartilage. It's it's all hardened up. It's not soft. I feel bad for the little dude. But he's happy. It's nice to know that he's here and he's got a safe place when it's cold. I, I hate to say it, but I just don't think I'll ever bring Ernie back up to the land because I just don't think he'll come back. Whereas Chester, he's he's by myself. Like Chester, even since I've got home, he is by my side 24-7. Like we're, we're so bonded. He knows I miss human. Ernie's still figuring that out. So maybe with time, Ernie will be able to go back to the land, but I just don't want to shake up his world too much he's already dealt with a great deal of change on another note i've decided with permission of my father that i'm going to build a catio out here this year let's go outside for a sec you're staying in here you little meatball no nope. so basically i have a window right here from the basement and what i'm going to do is i'll put a little staircase right there and I'm gonna get chicken wire. I'm gonna put a support, use some of the wood that I saved on my land. I'm gonna nail it in there. And then I'm gonna put chicken wire across this, chicken wire across all of that, cover the stairs. And then I'm gonna build a door right here that I can open up so I can still access this in my back door. But then I'm gonna make this the whole catio area. Probably bring some trees from the land, build some homemade cat towers and just make this all the cat space so when it's warm weather they're not trapped inside like chester is right now and i'm pretty excited for that it's going to cost some money but i think it'll be worth it in the long run to give the boys a space to hang out outside especially ernie because he won't be able to go up to the land like chester does right chest yeah he's such a good boy ernie's so skittish you guys want some dinner there goes ernie oh maybe we'll get a little Wrestle interaction. It's okay, Ernz. It's okay. Yeah, he's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. Chester, you want some dinner? 
All right. Oh, <laughs> there he goes. He knows. Yeah, you're so cute. You ready for your dinner? You ready? We're going to line you up. We're going to line you up, you little meatball. What's for dinner tonight? Let's see. We're doing gravy lovers. Kathy said, see if you can find a plastic material. My husband said chicken wire is hard to work with. I've, I haven't have had too much trouble with chicken wire. Obviously you gotta bend it into place, but I think using a staple gun and stapling it to the wood supports, stretching it out across and then closing things off should work. Um, I'll go through all these comments in a sec. I'm gonna get the boys situated with their food. Let's see if Chester devours his and then tries to steal Ernie's because he's good for that. When I came home, there's definitely a lot of dry food puked up on the floor. And I think Chester was just gorging himself. Hey, hey, hey. Easy does it there. Oh, that's easy now. Yeah, this is all for you guys, huh? Yep, me and your brother. No, back off, back off. Step away from the cat food. Step away. <laughs> No, you gotta wait until it's in position. No. All right, ready for the, the famous run? Let's go. Let's go. Come on. There he goes, his big, his big butt. Go, 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 go. Yeah, he's a good boy. There you go. Good boy. And Ernie, you ready? You ready for your foodies? There you go, good boy. Ernie knows to eat fast. Casey said, you probably know this, but make sure the catio anchor is anchored below ground level. Yeah, I'm going to bring some stones from the land or use some cinder blocks and put them around the perimeter of the base so that they can't squeeze underneath it. Susan asked... If there'll be a chicken wire roof, the roof is the porch itself. And everything that they could squeeze through will be closed off. Obviously, the last thing I want is for them to escape. So I will be making a catio, a.k.a. cat jail outside. <laughs> but it'll be, it'll be done properly. There will be no shortcuts done. Regular window screening. It's safe. Yeah, window screening's pretty expensive too so i don't think i'll use that mm -mm. Covid union defector said you could always grow a tray of wheatgrass for ernie to chomp on i'm gonna have to try that i've just been traveling so much and i've been having to deliver so many projects to so many different clients and juggle my personal life and it's just a lot i could use a little cat helper to be honest who wants to move to vermont and be my little kitty slave <laughs> Um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, doesn't really seem like I've missed much. You need a wife. I don't know if I need a wife quite yet. <laughs> I travel a lot. It's, it's tough to do relationships with all the travel. But I will find one in time. All in good time. Everything happens for a reason. MKV said, my cat patio is covered with screen. The mosquitoes are too bad here in Florida. They could give the cat heartworms. Unfortunately, we didn't, or fortunately, we do not have an insane amount of mosquitoes. We do have in Vermont, but not to the extent a place like Florida does. Mm -hmm. 
Bill Bradley said, my cat roams free outside and never runs away. As much as I'd like to do that with Chester, I know there's a bunch of outdoor cats in this neighborhood and there's just too many cars that go by on the street. And if Chester were to ever get hit by a car or disappear, I don't know how I'd live with myself. So for now, the only place I really feel comfortable letting him roam free is up in my land where I rescued him and where he knows where I am at all times and follows me. So that's probably how it's gonna be. Um, maybe someday, but I just don't think so. You're already done eating? Are you gonna go bully your little brother? Chester, that's not your food. You are such a little chonky. I took Chester for a walk two days ago on his harness when I got back, he was super excited. He loved it. I got some really cute photos I'll post at some point. And Chester definitely does act like a dog. I think that's why he was a great first cat for me because I've always been a dog person until I got these cats. So it was easy for me to, to fit right in. Rachel said, it looks like you cut your hair. You missed that. I was saying earlier, I got a mullet cut in Mexico. You can rewatch the live. I talk a little bit about that. Who plays guitar? My dad does. He's a musician. He's a super talented musician. He's been playing since he was a kid. He taught himself by ear, and he's still doing it to this day. Chester, are you monitoring the young, the your little older brother? <laughs> you guys are so cute. It's funny. Ernie clears the plate and Chester doesn't even finish it until later he eats like three quarters and leaves a little bit. What are you doing? You're like, why are you pointing this weird device at me? You're so cute. Yeah, you're such a good boy. Yeah, my, Barbara asked if my dad listens to John Mayer. We both love John Mayer. He's an incredible guitarist. He's awesome. Maybe I'll get him to play for us sometime on live or I'll catch him when he's doing it. Joey. Let's see if I can get Joey down here. Joey. Joey. <laughs> Ernie, I don't think is too big on, uh, on Joey, but he'll get used to having a dog around. Chester could care less. Someone said, I think John Mayer is a bit of a douchebag too. Well, unfortunately there's a lot of super talented people that are douchebags, but it's not gonna stop me from enjoying their music. But I have heard similar reports. Do I listen to Van Morrison? I do, and if I ever get married, my first dance will be Into the Mystic by Van Morrison, one of my favorite songs. Joey! The people are calling. <laughs> Jojo! Jojo! Let's see if I can find Joey. We'll take a break from the kitties. I'll show you guys all the dog who lives here. Oh, there he is. He's in my brother's room. I gotta turn the light on, give me one sec. He's such a good dog. How do I turn this thing on? There he is. Hi, Joe. Who's that? Oh, oh, he's such a good boy. Little Joey. Joey's a rescue from South Carolina, aren't you? Yeah, he's such a good boy. Oh, he's so cute. He's taking a little nap. Yeah, he's such a good boy, huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What do you think about all these cats, huh? 
What do you think? Yeah, he looks like a shepherd, but he's not. He's like a, he's like the perfect size dog. He's like probably 45 pounds, 50 pounds at most. Small enough to put on your lap, even though he'd be a heavy weight, but big enough to protect and get the job done and go on hikes. Aren't you? Yeah, he's such a good boy. And the best thing about him is you can kiss him anywhere. <coughs> he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. And here's Chester. He says, why are you giving this dog attention? So this is Joey. Yeah, Jojo. I call him Mojo Jojo. We did a DNA test and he doesn't even have any shepherd in him, which is weird because he looks so shepherd-like. Mm. Yes, Joseph. Little Joey. He smells like farts. He's ripping them in here. Well, that's Joey. Let's just show you guys the dog you hadn't seen. He's a good boy. Chester, where'd you go? So, that's what's going on with me. I'm trying to think about what else. I'm trying to think about what else. I don't really know what else. I know that it was super good for me to go on this trip to Mexico and Vegas. I was, I needed the sun and the vitamin D. Um, it's definitely feeling the seasonal depression to the max before going on that trip. And now it's rainy for the next three days, which is kind of a bummer, but I'm stuck inside doing work anyway. I think I'm gonna go to the land on Friday and get some work done down by the river and kind of see everything now that the snow's melted. I've been chopping down trees like crazy and debarking poles to build a, a Native American sweat lodge sauna, teepee style. So that's one of the projects I'm gonna tackle. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get a tractor this year. I want to, but I just think I don't really need it to do the projects I need to get done this year. Um, between transplanting trees and whatnot. I think if anything, even just buying a cheap four wheeler and getting a, a little tow behind trailer for it so I can haul stuff back and forth through the field, that, that might be my best bet. I really do want a tr uh, tractor, but it's just gonna be like an $800 a month payment. And I need to think about getting a new truck next year because Tammy's running strong, but the rest is starting to get to her, so. I think I'm gonna get a brand new Ranger because the new Rangers are made with aluminum chassis, which is way more resilient to rust because Vermont, that's like the death of all our cars here. It's, it almost seems silly to me to buy a new car in the state of Vermont, knowing that it won't last more than seven to eight years unless you undercoat it every year and take super good quality or care of it, wash it all the time, so. That's something I'm keeping in the back of my mind between all the other expenses, like getting a well drilled and building a house and just everything. I went to the grocery store a couple hours ago, two bags of groceries, hundred dollars. It's just, it's crazy. Everything's so damn expensive now. Barbara asked what a gator help on the land. If I could have a gator, I would have one. I love gators and crocodiles and reptiles so much. They're a big part of me, but I don't think a gator would survive in Vermont. Esteban said, I thought salt would eat aluminum. Apparently it can like affect the exterior of it, but it doesn't corrode all the way through. I need to do a little more research, but the people from Vermont Sports Car, which are car experts who I shoot video for, said that aluminum is definitely the way to go. And then I'll get it undercoated. So it has a layer of adhesive, oils to prevent rust from hitting it or salt for that matter so that's probably the plan for me i would like to get a tacoma but they aren't made with aluminum so i'm sticking with a ford ranger i don't drive no toyoyo i drive a ford fucking ranger <laughs> oh yeah i'm scrolling up to see mm -mm 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 -mm. yvette asked is ernie's amp Ear damage from frostbite. Uh, I think it's from frostbite and a combination of battling other male cats on the land because there's definitely some feral tomcats that creep around. Um, but I, I don't know. And I guess we never really will know. But I know that he's safe now. So that's the most important thing. 
Esteban said, no problems with the rust in SoCal. Yeah, I actually brought my Ford Ranger from Northern California. I bought it in the East Bay area in uh, Diablo, California, I think it is. Bought it for 7,000 bucks, 2008 Ranger. And I've had it since 2016. So I've had it for eight years. And the cost of maintenance has been probably no more than $1,500 a year. So I mean, that compared to a seven to $800 car payment per month is pretty much a game changer. I would buy another old Ranger if I could, but the prices have skyrocketed on them. Like to find the same thing that I bought now would be 15 to 20 grand because everyone wants those tiny trucks. They don't make them small like that anymore. Like even the new Rangers and Tacomas, they're not as small as they used to be, which is a good and a bad thing. I could use more storage space, more room in the back for when I have my bed set up in there and all that, but just gonna have to adapt and uh, work with what's available. <laughs> I see my buddy Mike's in here. He got a Toyota RAV4, it's brand spanking new pretty much. He's coming up to the land, I'm throwing a, a very small gathering with my close buddies, just a boys trip for the solar eclipse as we have almost 95% totality uh, where my land is, where it passes over, so. Monday, April 8th, there will be a solar eclipse and I'll have a great group of friends in attendance and probably a great episode from that as well. Bobby Bergeron, what up, Bobby? You just missed it. I was talking how I'm getting a Ranger because they're aluminum. Gonna have to stick with the Ranger even though I do love tacos, but we'll see. When the time comes, I'll make that decision, but rust is the biggest factor for me, so I think I might be getting a new Ranger. Barbara said, Ernie's ear is cauliflower ear from fighting in hematomas like boxers get. Yeah, I used to train Brazilian jiu-jitsu and I was starting to get cauliflower ear when I trained it. It was freaking me out. My ears would get all hard and lumpy. But I never got it. So thankfully I still have some nice ears. Yeah, I got the freaking mullet, dude. Business in the front. Party in the rear. It's almost waterfall season. We're gonna be getting after it. All right, Chester? Yeah, he's so cute. Chester's going up to the top of the tree. Look at him go. He may look fat, but he's still very agile. There's so much fluff here. It's gonna be sad when spring comes and he sheds it all. Yeah, he's such a good boy, aren't you? He's such a good boy. Look at those whiskers. So that's what's going on with me. I'm trying to think of if I had any other topics. The Kentucky Mud Flap. That's a good name too. Give me all the lingo. I'm going to freaking have a list of names to call this thing by the end of the summer. I think I'll be rocking a mullet for the foreseeable future. It's highly functional. I can still have my nice wave out the back of my hat, but I don't have hair getting in my eyes and in my mouth. Jenny said, my brother's in Rutland, which is very southern Vermont. Maybe I'll head out to watch it. I'm not sure the totality in Rutland, but I'm sure it'll be better than in Chicago. So it would still be a good place to watch it. Larry, my buddy, said, dye a blonde. I might get some ice tips in there. We'll see. I figure I'm only getting older, so if I want to look like a freak, I might as well do it now while I'm still in my 30s. Casey said it was cool to see your bike trip through the woods on Tuesday. Yeah, that was awesome. Unfortunately, I came to the realization that the trail I had made in the woods was just, it's just too tight. Like I, the one thing I did was I tried to maximize the use of the space in the woods. So I put a lot of switchbacks and stuff like that. But in doing so, I made it too tight. And there's definitely an art to trail building dirt bike trails. You want to have a good flow so you can maintain your speed. But uh, the turn track that I mowed through the field is so fun. And I hope to build an actual motocross, like a small motocross track for the pit bikes this year, even though that's low on the list of necessities. And if I do do that, I'll have to get dirt brought in because I don't want to dig into the earth because it's all clay and the drainage will be a nightmare. But until then, I'm going to keep mowing turn tracks through the field and just be able to hold it wide open and chase, chase my friends around. So there'll be, there'll be a lot more of that. In fact, I don't know when it happens, but in maybe 
four or five episodes, my buddy Wyatt comes up again with his pit bike and we just rip around the field for like a solid two hours straight chasing each other. It was so much fun. So much fun. If you've never ridden a dirt bike, oh, it's one of my greatest joys in life, having a throttle on your wrist and just balancing in a turn, like leaning into a turn and using the gas to pull you out of a turn and keep you balanced. It's a great feeling. Everyone should experience that. I would definitely say it's one of my favorite things in life to do, and I will continue to do it as long as I can. The old brap therapy, as they say. So Esteban, there will be more POV dirt biking. Make no mistake about that. Hey, hey, yo, said I was Googling the solar eclipse. The next total solar eclipse where I'm at in Europe is in 2081. And thus is the reason I am taking full advantage of the one that's coming in April. And I'm going to spend it with my best friends and really enjoy it. It's going to be awesome too, because a lot of them, one of which is in here, Suicide Jumper, my buddy Mike, who's a good friend of mine from Boston. He still hasn't gotten to see the land. He's just been watching all the episodes like you guys, so... It's gonna be a very cherished moment for me to be able to show my friends all my hard work and the future. Because when the world ends, I'll have a place for all my buddies to come hunker down. I've got running water, I'll have a well by then, lots of ammunition and whatever else is needed, raised beds for gardening. If shit ever did hit the fan, I wouldn't be the most prepared, but I'd be a lot better off than most of the people in this world. And the way the world's going, you never really know, do you? It's definitely getting pretty squirrely out there. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see what we got here. How big is the land? The land is 24 acres. And the portion that you guys have seen in the episodes is literally half the land i own an additional 10 to 12 acres on the other side of the road that is mostly wooded and there's some good pine and timber up there so if i do get a mill eventually which i'd like to get i will be able to plane my own wood and build more small cabins on the land and other structures with wood that is from my land as opposed to going to home depot and getting reamed paying for shitty lumber that didn't grow long enough and isn't as strong as I'd like, but that's just the way she goes for now. Got a lot of things I want to do. As you guys know, it's just a matter of prioritizing and busting my butt to make more money. Jacqueline Matthews asked, what is the little shed by the shooting barrels? Well, that used to be a storage shed, and now it is where I have all my reclaimed lumber that I took apart from the wood shed and everything I've salvaged. And it also holds the three cat shelters I made a couple months ago. So that's where Ernie was sleeping before I rescued him. Casey said, I once cut and milled lumber to build a room on a house in the mountains. Yeah, that's that's the goal. I just want to be more self-sustaining, even if the world doesn't end. I'm not, I'm low-key doomsday prepper. Just I'd, after COVID, I'd rather be prepared and ready if shit did hit the fan. But uh, my intent is certainly not to just create a compound to survive it's just i want to learn how to do things myself i want to learn how to build i want to know the basics of carpentry and framing and masonry and all these things so i can be a a guy that doesn't need to call somebody to do it for him i want to be able to do it myself so that's kind of the biggest thing with this whole endeavor is yeah i want to build a house but i want to learn i want to learn how to do everything myself so i can be a real man and I'm sure you guys have been watching me use a sawzall to cut down trees and are wondering when I'm going to get a chainsaw. Well, I did get a chainsaw and I will use it. I just need proper instruction and I need the right safety gear because there's one bar of service in certain spots on my land. And if I cut my leg off, I would certainly bleed out there. So you will see a chainsaw this year, but uh, the reason you haven't seen it is just didn't have one until... An episode from now, I got one from my brother at Camp Bo or Farm Boss from my brother, Old Steel. And I got it serviced and fixed up. I do know how to clean carburetors and all that shit because I work on dirt bikes. But I figured I would just bring it to the people that are pros at it. They fixed her up. So I have a saw that's ready to be used. I just need to get Big Nick up there or somebody that's got the skill set to show me the way the saw. And 
I'll be at it, but I mean, you can't deny the, the functionality and usability of that sawzall. It may take, you know, three times as long to cut through a tree, but it gets the job done and it's easy. It's all electric. You don't have to deal with any motor maintenance or anything like that. So I will continue to use the sawzall like a madman because it is by far and away my favorite tool. Wake up, said, I hate that my boyfriend doesn't want to learn anything like that. I had a faucet that needs replaced for like a year. Well, your boyfriend doesn't have too many excuses because YouTube exists. And if you really want to learn something, there's a video for everything on YouTube. So kick him in the nuts and tell him to get to work. <laughs> Uh, hey, yeah, yeah, just please use a mask when you deal with very old materials. Yeah, I'm sure it's been hard for a lot of you to watch me just like picking insulation with my bare hands and not using a mask. And there's there's not really much excuse for that. Um, I should be wearing a mask. Um, unfortunately, I've been pre-exposed to asbestos and PCBs for probably the last 10 years exploring abandoned insane asylums without a mask. But uh, I've gotten better about that when I do explore abandoned buildings. Now I do wear a respirator and I will wear one in the future and more eye protection and just be a little smarter about what I do because the last thing I want to do is get hurt on the land. It's just tough. As I said before, when I go up to the land, I bring all my tools, all my stuff, my guns and everything. And it's just another thing to remember. But I just need to buy a second respirator to keep up there all the time. Small price to pay for personal safety. Uh, 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 uh. Cats, cats. She said, my sister has a small holding, 12 acres. She bought it for 11,000 pounds and is worth 200,000 pounds. Sadly, she died last year. I'm sorry for your loss. That really does suck. And who knows what my property will be worth. That's the one thing that's like, it sucks to know that I might have to pay... Fifteen to thirty thousand dollars to get a well drilled, but ultimately that's building equity on my land. If I ever did sell it, which I won't, it'll have an increased value from all these things that I'm implementing and spending my money on. So, Chew said the demo on the crack shack was kind of cringe, man. Cringe, so cringe. You're a turkey, Chew but I'll accept your comment. Was it cringe? I'm sorry. I don't have OSHA up there. Sorry, I couldn't make it perfect for you, but I'm just doing what I can with what I've got. So, sorry, bro. I'm still here. There's Chester, the king. All right, we're getting close to an hour. Any other... Uh, questions before I get back to work. I promise I'll try and be better about safety procedures because obviously everyone's concerned about my safety, which I do appreciate. They're totally valid concerns. I'm just figuring it out as I go. It's easy to throw stones from a glass house. That's, that's my thing with the internet. Everyone's got an opinion, but unless you're there helping me, it's not really, it's not really affecting me too much. Uh, can't please everybody. I don't know what else to say, guys. I had a bunch of stuff written down, but I think I covered all the boxes. Litter robot. Chester's backstory, current work and future projects on the land, the cats getting along with each other, and yeah, me being happier from getting vitamin D in the sun in Mexico. Um, yeah, I appreciate everyone's support. It's certainly not lost on me. Everyone that tunes in every week, everybody that's bought stuff from the Amazon wish list. Everyone that enjoys my videos, I think I've, you know, I've been scrambling to cut the videos to release them every Tuesday. And I know everyone eagerly awaits that. And, but just know if there is a week that a video doesn't come up, it's for good reason, because I'm doing this all for free. I'm filming all this for free. Not that I should be getting paid. It's my own personal endeavor, but, 
And I don't want to say you guys are lucky enough, but to some degree you are lucky enough to be able to follow along this journey. So Kathy, the last four digits of my phone number are 0838 for Venmo. So if you want to shoot me money on there, feel free to. I can post my PayPal information again. I think I have my Venmo info on my channel info on YouTube. If anyone wants to make any donations to help pay for materials for the catio, definitely gonna have to spend a, a little chunk of change to get all that wire and some other stuff like that. I'm certainly not gonna turn down money. That helps give the cats a better life, but at the end of the day, as you know, and as I've said before, it's gonna get done one way or another. So donations are appreciated, but fear not, I will do it one way or another. And he said the video of Chester Levy up on Ernie is so funny. It is funny. I was saying earlier, he literally went up to him, grabbed him in a headlock, slammed him down, and started licking him. It's all right, Chewith. I was just popping off. They said, wasn't you so much as your friend. I still enjoy all the content. Thank you, Justin. Much love, bro. Yeah, Nick is a destroyer. He's one of two twins, and they are built to destroy stuff, and they are good at it. So... It was serendipity that he was available to help me wreck shit. I mean, it's just crazy. If you go back to like episodes five or six, extreme trailer makeover, like seeing what the party trailer looked like to how it looks now, we gutted that place. And it was certainly not an easy task. But now it's done and I'll keep that trailer up for another couple of years to use for storage and yeah, it's paid dividends. It certainly has. I mean, my storage container is already getting full. I'm like, if I had bought a tractor this year, if I do, it's going to be very cramped in there. Even getting a four-wheeler. So I'm just working with what I've got and uh, trying to make do with what I've got. But after I build my house, I want to build a two-bay garage with an in-law unit up top. So if someone wants to rent or stay up there with me, they can. And uh, it'll come together. But... I'll be around all this month aside from some small work gigs here and there. And I certainly will be going live once a week to keep you guys updated on everything. Obviously things at the land are moving a bit slower during this time in winter, but spring will be here in a heartbeat and we're going to be kicking back into gear. I'm going to be transplanting trees. Hi Tammy. Uh, from the back of the property up to the, the road frontage so I can start to create a natural fence. Kathy just paid me $50 through Venmo. Thank you, Kathy. That's very generous of you. And uh, yeah, I'm going to build a teepee sauna. I want to build some raised beds. We're going to build an outhouse. We're going to build a shooting pavilion and get a long distance range set up so we can shoot 300 plus feet with the, uh, the rifles. Going to be a lot more gun training. Someone popped off in one of my videos, presumably someone not from the United States, about why I needed guns at my land. It's like... It's just a part of our culture here in America. I know to some degree it seems silly to a lot of people that don't live in the United States, but if I have the right to bear arms, uh, I'm going to do so. And I live, the land is in the middle of nowhere. So in theory, if somebody wanted to come and stir some shit up, the cops wouldn't be there for probably 30 plus minutes. And uh, yeah, so. I'd rather have it and not need it than not have it and need it, as the saying goes. So, can't please everybody on the internet. I know all of us Americans seem like gun-toting psychos, but it's a small percentage of shitheads that shoot up schools and cause problems that ruin it for the rest of us. And, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. And I think that's, to a larger degree, a statement to the mental health crisis in our country and in this world, as opposed to guns. Um, especially with social media. People are just sitting online, festering, looking at people's lives, getting envious or jealous of why they don't have what other people have. And it's definitely not good for your brain. And um, that's why I hope that this series and me doing this inspires people to pursue their own thing. There's my old man. They want you to play guitar. Who's that? All the people on live. This is the legend, Woodstock. <laughs> Woodstock. <laughs> He Woodstock made, Jenny. Yeah, Woodstock Jenny. Yep. But, um, yeah, that's about it for me. I appreciate everyone tuning in, all 82 of you. It's still a shock to me that this many people want to watch me blab on live. 
appreciate everybody from far and near, especially my close friends. It's not hard to support your friends. Do it as much as you can. And with that being said, we'll give Chester some smoochies. Rachel Shadow said, maybe you don't really need to be able to buy machine guns. Guess what, Rachel? You can't buy a machine gun. You can't own a machine gun in the United States unless you have a dealer's license. You can have a semi-automatic rifle. That means you have to press the trigger every time it shoots. No different than a pistol. I think people need to get a little more educated about firearms before they make blanketed statements because... I can't own a machine gun and I would never be able to own a machine gun. If I could, I would own one just for fun, but I wouldn't do anything crazy with it. There he is. You love to kiss you, don't you? It's all right, Rachel. You, you're Canadian. Canadians rule. I have much love for Canada, even though your country's getting a little crazy. I don't know if free speech is still a thing there. And they certainly don't want you having guns. If you know the American government and how shady our government is, you'd probably want to have a gun too. We cannot be trusted. We, we hold coups in foreign countries and upturned governments. And we are a shady fucking country, so... I'm going to keep stocking up on ammunition and practicing to use a firearm in the hopes that I never have to use it. But I like to just learn things and get good at them, just like building houses. It's not even, for me, it's a craft. It's not even about having to shoot somebody. I would never, ever have to want to use deadly force on somebody that would traumatize me for the rest of my life. I just like the skill idea of it. I like the idea of drawing a firearm and being able to shoot super fast, all these different things. It's it's something that's not easy and it takes practice and I have a long ways to go. I'd say I'm pretty proficient with firearms, but I'm just scraping the surface. So yeah, that's, that'll conclude things. And, uh, I hope everyone has a great week and a better weekend. And I, once again, greatly appreciate everyone that watches my episodes every week, comments, shows love shows, uh, you know, everyone that gives me constructive criticism and doesn't try and condemn me for not using a mask or whatever, it's, it's appreciated. There's definitely a right way and a wrong way to come off on the internet, so. Do we have bears there? There are bears, but I have not seen any yet. And I would certainly not want to have to shoot a bear. Bears are beautiful creatures. I don't want to kill any animals. Point blank, unless it's a deer and I'm going to eat it. And I would not feel bad. I mean, I would feel bad in the moment and I would probably cry, but I would know that I'm going to use that meat to feed myself, my family, and my friends. So I think everyone is very, br not brainwashed, but we just live in a society where we take for granted the food we eat. Um, you know, p the same people that say hunting is bad go to McDonald's and eat a Big Mac. It's like, how can you live with yourself? Those are animals that are tortured, that live in pens, that can't even move. And yet somebody taking the life of an animal that lived pure freedom until its last moment, like that's that's as true as it gets if you're going to eat and consume meat. If you're a vegan, then more power to you, but that's just not the case for me, so. And one last look at my hair. <laughs> got the Kentucky waterfall, bud. We're going to call it a Vermont waterfall because we got plenty of those up here too. I love you guys. Everybody have a great night. And uh, I do have a mullet, Susan. You just saw it. <laughs> and uh, with that being said, over and out. Chester and Ernie send their love. So do I. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Cheers.